Hello, and welcome to The Top Story, a podcast with the headlines of the day from our correspondents around the world. I'm Shane Bigham. Coming up in this edition, Tuesday marks the 75th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. Japan's parliament formally elected Shigeru Ishiba as the country's new prime minister. The Israeli military says it's begun a limited ground operation against Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. We begin in Asia. Tuesday marks the 75th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. To mark National Day, hundreds of thousands gathered at Tiananmen Square early in the morning for a flag-raising ceremony. Chen Yuan reports. It's 6 a.m. on October 1st, 2024, and people from across the country have gathered here, brimming with excitement, to watch the flag-raising ceremony at Tiananmen Square. It's set to be held at 6, 11 a.m., but to secure a spot, some got here much earlier. For many here, watching the ceremony in person is a dream come true. As the Chinese national flag ascends, the Chinese dream, a vision of prosperity and happiness, resonates in the hearts of the people. I'm 77 years old, and this is the first time I've seen the flag-raising ceremony. I'm glad we are here. I can't believe we are living such a good life. That's happiness. It's stunning. I've seen flag-raising ceremonies before, but witnessing it here feels different. I can feel the strength of our country. I hope that Chinese people of all ethnic groups strive unitedly to advance the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. As the People's Republic of China celebrates 75 years of unity and progress, the Chinese people are poised to forge ahead, committed to building a strong and prosperous nation. That was Chen Yuan on the National Day flag-raising ceremony at Tiananmen Square. Japan's parliament formally elected Shigeru Ishiba as the country's new prime minister. This comes after Fumio Kishida resigned with his cabinet, marking an end to his three-year tenure. Last week, the country's ruling Liberal Democratic Party elected Ishiba as party president, clearing the way for him to become prime minister. Chris Gilbert looks back at Kishida's time in office and what the incoming Ishiba administration might bring. As Shigeru Ishiba's tenure as prime minister begins, as curtains for Fumio Kishida. In 2021, Kishida was elected LDP president and inherited a country reeling from the pandemic and the troubled 2020 Olympics. He was charged with managing Japan's post-pandemic bounce back, boosting the defense budget and tackling depopulation through better childcare. Kishida promised a new capitalism, saying in 2023 that his priorities were economy, economy, economy. My vision is an economic model that maintains strong supply chains and can overcome social issues like climate change and inequality. Public and private sectors will work together to transform social issues into engines of growth. However, his time in office coincided with a historic plunge of the yen, which boosted import costs and saw a rare price hike for consumers. Kichida received a small bump in popularity when he hosted the G7 leaders last year in his hometown Hiroshima, where he rallied international support for Ukraine. But his administration was troubled by party scandals. First, its association with the Unification Church, which has been questioned over its method of procuring donations. Then came revelations of a kickback scheme where senior lawmakers skim surplus proceeds from fundraising events. Political scientists say despite the scandals, Kishida achieved a lot during his three years, more than former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe did in seven. Kishida's government was unpopular for most of his three-year term. While polls show that cabinet's approval rating was about 20 to 30 percent, up to 69 percent disapproved of his administration's work. The party's now hoping that Shigeru Ishiba can turn this around. Ishiba is outspoken on defense and supports Japan codifying the self defense force in its constitution. He says he's enthusiastic about revitalizing Japan's smaller regions. On energy, he supports restarting Japan's nuclear reactors. And while he reportedly is disliked inside the party, he's very popular among Japan's rural voters and wants to change the perception of the LDP. By not seeking a return to power, Prime Minister Kishida made the important decision that maintains the integrity of the office so that the LDP can be reborn and regain the trust of the people. 
The party will now find out if the public agrees. Shigeru Ishiba is set to dissolve parliament by October 9 for a snap election to be held on October 27. That was Chris Gilbert in Tokyo. In the Middle East, the Israeli military says it's begun a limited ground operation against Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. The announcement comes after hours of raids and artillery fire by Israel across the border and amid restricted civilian movements in some Israeli border communities. Hezbollah has not officially commented on Israel's ground operation. Evangelo Sipsis has more from Beirut. A much anticipated invasion indeed, and it happened, and it happened here in Lebanon. We heard the news as well that was, that was reported by the uh, Israeli Defense Forces. There has been a lot of uh, circulation in local media. You know, they're entering, they're not entering, but the IDF announced that, that they are uh, beginning their uh, localized limited operation in northern Lebanon, sorry, in, in, in uh, southern Lebanon, and the uh, villages that are border with northern Israel. Now, as they mentioned, they're only going to be targeting a number of villages that are around the border that they say are Hezbollah positions, pos- uh, villages that uh, Hezbollah has been using to fire rockets into uh, northern Israel. And, and they said that that's why they, they put the word localized and, and limited uh, type of operation. I have to mention here, though, uh, the whole day, there hasn't been any airstrikes for the past few days. We have been experiencing heavy airstrikes, but for the for the past uh, 12 to, to 18 hours, nothing, nothing was happening throughout the day. And then all of a sudden, a number of airstrikes taking place at the same time, coordinated in a bunch of areas across Lebanon, even here in the heart of Beirut. And then heavy artillery shelling from northern Israel into southern Lebanon. And that's when the ground invasion happened. So there's been a lot of movement movement on the border. More than 35,000 soldiers uh, were in on the border for almost a week now with a number of uh, tanks and, and artillery vehicles. We weren't, uh, we didn't know when we we're going to expect it. There was a, a military embargo of, of the information that was coming out from Israel. But then we heard the news. It has happened. They are doing this limited operation. The IDF says the reason why they're doing it is to target Hezbollah positions in order to be able to bring their citizens back to the northern parts of Israel and stay there. That was Evangelo Sipsis reporting on the Israeli military's operation in southern Lebanon. Turning to America, the number of deaths after Hurricane Helene's destruction across the U.S. southeast has reached at least 133. A crisis is unfolding in the mountains of western North Carolina, where water, food, and other supplies are being airlifted into places cut off by mudslides and washed out roads. Officials worry that the number of deaths will rise further as searchers reach isolated areas. Nearly three dozen people have died in the county that includes the tourism hub of Asheville. National Guard personnel are evacuating residents and their pets from a flooded area. Mary Bell Gonzalez reports. Asheville, North Carolina, where roadways that looked like rivers are now filled with sludge. It's pretty shocking. I mean... I think I don't think anyone really prepared for it to be this high of water. Residents and business owners returning to see their hard work gone. Him and me are both from Florida, so we've seen a lot of hurricanes, but I've never seen anything like this. I mean, the just from the Swannanoa River right here, that tiny little river just turned into this massive, I mean, disaster. It's it's horrible. It's indescribable. I don't know. It just was covered in litter and trees and mud and it's stinky and it was all the way up the street up here. Um, It just looks like the bottom of a river. Despite their own loss, stepping up to assist their community. We're coming out here to grab our trucks actually to go to a different location and we're going to try to help some of these people out. President Joe Biden addressing the devastation from Helene on Monday. I've directed my team to provide every every available resource as fast as possible to your communities to rescue, recover, and to begin rebuilding. In hard-hit Buncombe County, which includes the city of Asheville, search and rescue operations are ongoing. Trees are down. We're clearing those as, as quick as we can. And a lot of the critical infrastructure that we become used to every day in normal times is is now gone and we have to work around it. Residents know it will be a while before things get back to normal. That was Mary Bell Gonzalez on the impact of Hurricane Helene in the U.S. Southeast. 
Finally, in Africa, deaths from the Marburg virus have risen to eight in Rwanda. The government issued new guidelines to prevent the spread of the virus. They include limiting contact for suspected cases. The government's currently monitoring 300 contacts for confirmed cases. Ethan Tashabia has details. The government of Rwanda has issued updated guidelines in regards to the fight of the spread of the Marburg virus following the rise in death toll to eight, with two more fatalities announced Sunday night. Among the new measures are suspending hospital visits for the next 14 days and restricting physical contact with suspected cases. Works and home vigils are not allowed in the case of a death linked to the Marburg virus to avoid gatherings that may increase the risk of spreading the virus. Funeral services where the cause of the death was determined to be Marburg will be attended by not more than 50 people. In a press briefing on Sunday, Rwanda's Minister of Health announced that the government is closely monitoring 300 individuals who have been in contact with the confirmed cases. And that's why contact tracing is um, our main focus, uh, lab diagnostics and also uh, clinical treatment. Uh, this virus has a very high fatality rate, um, which ranges between 28 uh, to 90 percent uh, sometimes. It's a big range, but um, our aim is to reduce the mortality rate as, as much as possible. Um, the numbers I mentioned um, are mainly among healthcare workers, uh, and these are people who are saving lives, and we are there also to save their lives. Uh, as, as we can using the means uh, that are available. The World Health Organization is also deploying a team of seven experts to assist in training local health workers. It will also support the provision of medical supplies to help control the outbreak. Among the 300 contacts announced by the Minister of Health, one hails from this border town of Gisenyi in western Rwanda. A total of 26 Marburg virus disease cases were confirmed in Rwanda on Saturday by Rwanda's Minister of Health. Most of the victims in current cases are healthcare workers. The Minister of Health confirmed the outbreak on Saturday following the world spread reports on social media. Cases were first reported in major hospitals in Kigali, including Kigali University Teaching Hospital, King Faisal Hospital, and Massacre Hospital. This outbreak occurs as Rwanda remains alert to the MPOX virus. Authorities are conducting contact tracing and confirmed cases have been isolated. The Marburg virus, which comes from the same family viruses of Ebola, is spread through contact with the infected blood or body fluids. It's not airborne. That was Ethan Tashabia reporting. Now recapping the headlines, Tuesday marks the 75th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. Japan's parliament has formally elected Shigeru Ishiba as the country's new prime minister. The Israeli military says it's begun a limited ground operation against Hezbollah in southern Lebanon. That's it for this edition of The Top Story, a podcast that brings you the world headlines every weekday. For more news in politics, business, sports, and culture, you can subscribe to The Beijing Hour, a one-hour podcast news magazine program. We welcome and appreciate all ratings and reviews. I'm Shane Bigel. Thanks for listening.